I'm Dr. Deborah Wilson, and this is Dr. Carrie Roberts, and we're going to be talking about hysterectomy. So years ago, um, in your grandmother's time or even your mother's time, uh, if a hysterectomy was necessary, it was done through either a big incision lower or an up and down incision, leaving quite a scar and um, you know, lots of post-operative pain and increased risk for adhesions, and patients would be in the hospital for five or seven days, and yeah, lots of pain. So um, these days, uh, if a patient needs a hysterectomy, uh, Dr. Roberts and I specialize in minimally invasive hysterectomy. In other words, hysterectomy done through tiny little incisions, even if you have a big uterus. And, um, and Dr. Roberts uh, trained in um, Michigan for a year and had a lot of experience doing these minimally invasive hysterectomies, which, which get the patient out of the hospital very quickly, and the recovery is often you know, a week or so. Um, patients go back to work within a week, often if they don't have a very physical job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, the surgery doesn't take that long. It usually is about 45 minutes to an hour relatively painless, very little blood loss and scar tissue, and one night in the hospital or home the same day, depending. I have a lot of questions about, patients ask me about robotic hysterectomy, and, and that is definitely, it, it is less invasive than a big incision, but neither of us uh, really need the robot uh, because we can sew, you know, you, the robot helps surgeons sew. I mean, that's the big thing, because sewing is technical, and uh, it is difficult for some surgeons, but we can do it without the robot, which means there are fewer incisions, yeah. smaller incisions, and less operating time. Shorter yeah. operating time, usually about by an hour at least. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot faster time, less time under anesthesia, which mm -hmm. therefore means less risk during surgery. Yeah, yeah. And less expensive and, you know, all those good things, yeah. So... That's an option, and definitely robotic hysterectomy is better than an open hysterectomy, but I think personally um, the laparoscopic hysterectomy with small incisions is the best way to go. I agree. Yeah, and I'll do robotic surgery for endometriosis cases, mm -hmm. um, which, again, I trained on the robot. I'm very comfortable with the robot, mm -hmm. um, and for complicated surgeries like an endometriosis case, that's a really good candidate for a robotic case. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's really not needed, like you yeah. said. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. Um, now, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, media attention to robotic hysterectomy, but yeah. So even in the case, you know, you mentioned it containing cells, even in the case of a large fibroid uterus, um, I'd say 99% of the time we can still remove this large uterus through really tiny incisions, and that's a huge breakthrough. And, uh, and that was impossible probably 15 years ago, yeah. but, um, but it's become very possible over the past few years, and that's a huge advantage to a patient. Yeah. yeah. Other questions that I get a lot, um, especially preoperatively, concerns about future prolapse, concerns about mm -hmm. vaginal mm -hmm. prolapse, and both of us use the same technique where we attach the uterosacral ligaments to the vaginal cuff to give that support. Mm -hmm. And so it's very uncommon that one of our patients will have a prolapse. Um, it's not yeah. impossible, mm -hmm. but very uncommon. Yeah, I'm thinking, I mean, I've been doing these for, what, 20 years now, at least, and uh, I, I can't think of a patient who's had a post-operative prolapse um, because of the way we, the way we incorporate the uterosacral ligaments into the top of the vagina. Yeah, into yeah. the into yeah. the repair itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, not adding a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, the the technique that both of us use does not use mesh. We don't leave a permanent mm -hmm. um, mesh material in the pelvis, and I know that that's received a lot of attention mm -hmm. in the media. But um, but still, you have that permanent apical support of the vaginal mm -hmm. cuff, which is super important to women. Yeah, and I get asked a lot, well, I read that after a hysterectomy, my bladder is going to fall out. You know, the fact of the matter is the uterus has no supportive function. It has no anatomically supportive function. If you think about it, in pregnancy, it's got to get big, it's got to get small, so it really can't function as any kind of anatomical support. So 
there, there's no evidence that taking a uterus out causes the bladder to fall or sure. you know anything. Or vaginal like prolapse, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So another question I get a lot um, when we're talking about surgery for whatever indication is, are you going to take out the ovaries? What will de what will that do to my hormones and how will that um, mm -hmm. you know affect me down the road? And it really comes down to the individual decision, her risk factors, her current age, mm -hmm. um, if she's already on hormone replacement treatments or not. Um, so oftentimes we individualize that decision and then looking at the future risks of having ovarian mm -hmm. cancer, yeah. ovarian cysts, pelvic pain, um, which can happen when the ovaries are in place. You know, if somebody is over 50 or even 49 years old, I do recommend they have the ovaries out. Ovarian cancer is not, it, it, I mean, the risk of ovarian cancer is, I think, one in 70, but it's a deadly disease. It is a terribly deadly disease, yeah. and it's very hard to diagnose early on. Mm -hmm. So, I always like. I like. I would prefer to get ovaries out of there. Of course, we give patients the choice. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. A, it's an individual decision. It's a big decision to make. Everybody, mm -hmm. you know, we always take each individual, um, and making sure that we listen to them and what their desires are and what their uh, risk factors are, mm -hmm. and making that mm -hmm. part of the mm -hmm. decision. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they have any kind of genetic mutation that predisposes to ovarian cancer, obviously that's a slam dunk. Sure. But, yeah, there's um, no question. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like our patients are listened to in our office. We really mm -hmm. um, make sure that they have a complete understanding of what and why things are done. Mm -hmm. um, and then, again, individualize each case and making sure that they, they have uh, what they need. So if you have ever had heavy bleeding or uterine fibroids, Escher coils, or another reason that you would need a surgery, perhaps you were told you maybe need a hysterectomy from another provider, uh, feel free to give us our office a call. We'd be happy to consult and help you make the right decision for you.